Polynomials. Definitions for polynomials. Our first definition is a monomial. Monomial has only one term. So you see three examples here of a monomial. My 5x, the 7m to the 9th, or a simple constant, a negative 8. Polynomials are made up of one or more monomials. Add it or subtract it. A special kind of polynomial is called a binomial, and that is when it, you have exactly two terms. So binomials are sometimes written without parentheses, and sometimes they're written with parentheses. And the next special type of polynomial is called a trinomial, and that is when you have exactly three terms. So you see two examples here of trinomials, one with parentheses and one without. When we are talking about standard form, standard form for polynomials is ordering the terms from the exponents. And it goes from the highest exponent to the lowest or the constant. And you want to work from left to right. So you see an example here of standard form. I have a 7x to the third plus the 5x squared minus 4x plus 3. So it's from the highest exponent to the constant. Standard form is important, so you want to make sure that you know how to do standard form. Pause and try. So when we rewrite this in standard form, again you're starting with the highest exponent all the way down to the constant. You should have gotten 6x to the fifth plus 5x to the third plus x minus 3. So when we're doing addition of polynomials, you'll have two polynomials. Sometimes they might have parentheses around them. So you're going to have to remove the parentheses. You're going to combine like terms, and you're going to write your answer in standard form, highest exponent to the constant. Now just as a reminder here, like terms have the same variable and the same exponent. So when you have the variable with the same exponent, you're going to add or subtract their coefficient. So here's an example. We have addition of polynomials. I have two separate polynomials in parentheses, and I have an addition sign separating them. So I'm going to remove the parentheses, and I'm going to combine like terms. So my like terms here have the same variable with the same exponent. So I have an x squared and a plus 3x squared. And remember that x squared really has a coefficient of 1, so I'm going to end up getting 4x squared. And then I have that plus 6x plus 10x, and I'm going to add the coefficients, and I'm going to get plus 16x. And then lastly, I have my constant. It's 22 positive minus 16, so I'm going to be left with plus 6. Plus six. So this is addition of polynomials and it is written in standard form. Pause and try. So when you do the addition here, you should have gotten the answer as 2x to the third plus 3x squared plus x minus 1, written in standard form. When we're doing a subtraction, subtraction is different. When you're doing subtraction, when there's a negative sign on the outside of parentheses, you're going to have to distribute that negative. Then you'll combine like terms and put it in standard form. So you see in this case, I have a parentheses with polynomials in them, and it's separated by a minus sign. Therefore, I have subtraction. And really, whenever you have a minus sign in front of parentheses, you're distributing a negative 1, or you'll be changing the signs of everything in that parentheses. So the first parentheses is just going to come down outside, and then I'm going to distribute that negative, which is changing the signs of everything inside the parentheses. And now that I distribute that negative, I can combine like terms. So now you're going to combine the like terms. We have a 12x squared minus 7x squared, that's where the 5x squared comes from. And then you have a negative 16x minus 22x, 
So you're going to end up with a negative or minus 38x. And then 9 plus 17 will give us plus 26. Pause and try. So again, we remove the parentheses of the first po uh, polynomial, and then we distribute the negative to the second polynomial. Now we can combine like terms, and we're going to end up with a negative 5x squared minus 11x minus 30. So when we're doing multiplication of polynomials by a monomial, you're going to use the distributive property, and you're going to use the product rule of exponents. And remember the product rule of exponents, with like bases, you add the exponents. So here's an example. I have the distributive property and a variable, and whenever I have a variable that I'm multiplying through, I have to add the exponents. So I'm going to show you and grade out what it would look like, but what you want to be able to do is do this in your head. So we have 2x times the 3x squared. Well, this is a monomial to a monomial, properties of exponents. You multiply the numbers and add the exponents. So we end up getting 2 times 3 is 6, and then x times x squared will give us x to the third. And I'm going to do that all the way through. 2x times 2x will give me plus 4x squared, and then 2x times a negative 1 will give me minus 2x. So ideally, you should be able to go from the distributive property to the answer. But I wanted to show you what was happening, and that's what the gray is. Pause and try. So when you do the distributive property here, you should get 20x to the third, plus 4x squared, plus 24x. So now what we're going to do is multiply a binomial to a binomial. So you, we're still going to be using our distributive property and the product rule of exponents, but in our last part, we might have to ha combine like terms. So it's always important that you, if there's like terms, that you combine them. If not, it would not be in simplest form. So here's an example. I'm going to do the distributive property for the first binomial to the second binomial. And you're just going to do one term at a time. So you're going to take the first term of the first binomial and multiply it to the first term of the second binomial. And you're going to get 14x squared. 2x times 7x is 14x squared. You're going to take that 2x and you're going to multiply it to the last term, and you're going to get 2x times a negative 5, which is going to give us a minus 10x. Now you're going to take the second term in the first binomial and do the same thing, distribute it to the second binomial. So we get 1 times 7x is going to be plus 7x. 1 times a negative 5 is going to be minus 5. Now that you did the multiplication all the way through, your last step will be to combine like terms. And in this case, I have like terms that negative 10x plus 7x can be combined. So I end up getting my final answer is 14x squared minus 3x minus, 7, minus 5. Pause and try. So again, I'm multiplying 9x to x, and I get 9x squared. 9x to the 6, and I get plus 54x. And then I'm taking that negative 5 to x, and I get minus 5x. And negative 5 to 6, and I get a negative 30. And then I'm going to combine the like terms in the middle. So my final answer would be 9x squared plus 49x minus 30. So now we're going to get into some special cases of multiplication. Whenever you have a square on the outside of a binomial, it means you have two binomials. So that square on the outside does not get distributed to the inside. You actually have to write the binomials twice. You have two binomials. So please make sure when you see a square, it's a special case. It's a squared binomial, and you're going to take that, and you're going to multiply it to itself. 
So we end up doing the multiplication here. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. And then 1 times 3x is plus 3x. And then 1 times 1 is 1. And then you'll be doing that combined like term and get the 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. So this is a special case. And with special cases, we have shortcuts that we can use. And the shortcut for a squared binomial is this. Whenever you have a squared binomial, to get the multiplication of it, you just take the first term and square it. That's where that a squared is. The middle term will always be the two terms inside the binomial multiplied together and then doubled times 2. And then your last term will always be the last term squared. So let's see what this looks like. And again, you could write it twice and multiply it out, or you could use the shortcut. So again, the shortcut says, take the first term, and my first term here is 4x. I take the 4x and I square it. So I have 4x squared. So not only am I squaring the variable, but I have to square the number. So I get 16x squared. So that is my first term. Take the first term and square it. My middle term will be the 4x times 6 times 2. So again, it's the 2 times the 4x, my a, times the b, which is 6. And when I multiply this all the way through, I get 2 times 4, which is 8, and 8 times 6, which is 48, and then I have x. So at my middle term would be plus 48x. And then I'm going to take the last term and square it. So I get 6 squared, so it's going to be plus 36. So the shortcut is take the first term, square it. The middle term is going to be the first and the last term multiplied together times 2. And then the last term is the last term squared. So the only difference when you have a squared binomial and you have a minus in the binomial is that your middle term will be a minus. So again, we're going to do an example here, and we're going to do it the shortcut. You're going to take the first term and square it, so you have 2x squared will give us 4x squared. The middle term is going to be 2 times that 2x times 3, and it's always going to be minus. So you're going to have 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, so you get a minus 12x. And then you're going to take the last term and square it, which would be 3, three squared, so you get plus 9. So this is the shortcut for a squared binomial. Pause and try. So again, you get the first term squared, 4x squared. Middle term is 2x times 5, which is 10, times 2. So you're going to get a minus 20x. And then the last term is 5 squared, which is plus 25. And you could always just write it twice and multiply it out. But it's good to learn the shortcut. This is our next special case. And what I want you to notice here is that our term our first term is the same, and the last term, the only difference is their sign. This is a special trinomial. Now we're going to multiply this out the way we multiply binomials out. First term to the first term, and we get 16x squared. 4x times that minus 1 is going to give me a negative 4x. 1 times 4x is going to give me a positive 4x. And 1 times a negative 1 will give me a negative 1. So now notice when we combine like terms. When we combine like terms here, we have a negative 4x plus 4x. That cancels my middle term out. And I'm left with 16x squared minus 1. So this is a special case for binomial multiplication. So when you have a, this special case, it's called the sum and difference of binomials. So what is the sum? The sum means addition. Difference means subtraction. So the only difference here is my 1 has plus and 1 has minus in it. But the first term is the same and the last term is the same. 
So when you multiply it out, it will always simply be the first term squared, always minus the last term squared. So it's always going to be a minus, and you just take the first term and square it, and the, and the last term square it. So here's an example. We have our first term is 3x plus 2, and we have a 3x minus 2. So the only difference between the binomials is one has a plus and one has a minus. So this is the sum and difference. So I'm going to do it the shortcut way. I'm going to square the first term, minus, always minus, square the last term. So we end up getting a 9x squared minus 4. And this is the shortcut for the sum and difference. Pause and try. So you should have gotten a 64x squared minus 16. So now we're going to do multiplication of a binomial and a trinomial. When we have a binomial and a trinomial, you're going to be using the distributive property, you're going to be using that product rule for exponents, and you're going to be combining like terms. So here's an example. I have a binomial to a trinomial. And if a binomial isn't the first thing that comes, if the trinomial is first and then the binomial is after, I always like writing the binomial in front. So I'm going to take this binomial, I'm going to take the first term, and I'm going to distribute it to everything in the second, in the trinomial. So I'm going to take x times 2x squared, and I'm going to get 2x to the third. I'm going to multiply it to the 7x, and I'm going to get the plus 7x squared. And I'm going to multiply it to the 3, I'm going to get plus 3x. And now I need to distribute that negative 1 to everything, so I get negative 1 times 2x squared is going to give me minus 2x squared. Negative 1 times positive 7x is going to give me a negative 7x. And negative 1 times positive 3 will give me negative 3. Now I'm going to combine like terms. There's no other 3x, or there's no other x to the third, so I'm going to have that in my solution, and I'm going to add the coefficients of the 7x squared and the minus 2x squared, and that's going to give me 5x squared. And then I have the plus 3x minus 7x will give me minus 4x, and then I just bring down the constant, that minus 3. And this is in simplest form. Pause and try. So when you do the distributive property here, you're going to end up getting x to the third minus 4x squared plus x plus 9x squared minus 36 plus 9. And then you're going to combine like terms, and you're going to get x to the third plus 5x squared minus 35x plus 9.